So how do you stand out when everybody's doing that? Um, so pursue the thing you love, pursue the thing that you're excited about because you're more likely to make an impact in that thing. That thing can be a sport and it can be community service, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a specific thing. When you're making an impact, um, when you're doing something that you really enjoy, you're going to be able to answer those questions on the application better, for one thing. Uh, and it's going to be obvious that you do something that you really like to do. You're listening to the SmartSocial.com podcast. Each week, we help parents and educators keep students safe on social media so they can someday shine online. Before we get into today's program, make sure you join our newsletter to get the most up-to-date social media alerts at SmartSocial.com slash newsletter. Now let's get to the program. Hi there, I am Brianne Boyle, and I started my own company a couple of years ago called BB College Prep where I guide students through the process of high school activities and class discovery, doing their college research, um, figuring out a good college list, as well as doing the whole application process. I've been doing this for about 12 years or so. I have worked with a larger company um, called CollegeWise. I'm now doing it on my own, which is great. And uh, I am also a past president for the Western Association of College Admission Counseling, which is a long title, but was a really great opportunity. It's so great to have you on the episode here today. For everybody who's watching here today, you know that our podcast is all about launching students into their future. First, we need to start with how do we keep students safe on social media so that they can then someday shine online and launch into their future dream college, career, internship, and everything else. So today, we're going to really talk a lot about how do we get your students thinking about in middle school and high school, the things that they need to think about so that they have a plan for their future that not only will keep them safe, but get them thinking about what do they want to do in college? What are some major ideas? Are there scholarships out there? What should we think about ahead of time so that parents don't say, I wish I would have known that ahead of time. So we're so excited to have you here today. My first question for you here today is, what types of extracurricular activities, hobbies, and skills do you feel make students stand out the most to college admissions officers? And just before we answer, the idea would be, hey, while we're in high school, what are the things we should be doing? And then showing them that are the real us so they can see, mm -hmm. wow, the student's past performance is a predictor of their future behavior on our campus. So with that in mind, what are some of those extracurricular activities that college admissions officers might want to know about? Yeah, and that's actually the perfect way to frame it. It's how I try to frame it to families all the time. The reason that colleges even want to know about this is because they want to know who you'll be on their own campus. And one of the best ways for them to determine that is to know what are you doing right now? What are you doing in high school so that we can say, you're going to bring that to our campus and make our campus shine. So I'm, I'm glad you framed it that way. Um, there really isn't a perfect list of things here. Uh, I get this question a lot where I think people want me to give them like, here are the five things that, you know, colleges really want. And I think the activities and hobbies that really make a student stand out are the ones that are genuine and support the interests that they love. So it's obvious when a student is pursuing an activity they truly enjoy versus something that they're just signing up for, you know, they're just seeing a list and checking it off saying, I have to do community service. I have to do a sport. I have to do X, Y, Z. And that's truly not the way students should go about it because everybody's doing it that way. So how do you stand out when everybody's doing that? Um, so pursue the thing you love, pursue the thing that you're excited about because you're more likely to make an impact in that thing. That thing can be a sport and it can be community service, but it doesn't necessarily need to be a specific thing. When you're making an impact, um, when you're doing something that you really enjoy, you're gonna be able to answer those questions on the application better for one thing. Uh, and it's gonna be obvious that you do something that you really like to do. Um, and that can be all kinds of stuff. I've had students who, you know, have their own Etsy shop because they're making their own handbags. One of my seniors this year did that, which is really cool. It's just something that she really loved to do. And I've had students who started clubs on campus to, you know, get together girls who code and, and get kind of computer science stuff going. So I think it can be anything, but it should be something that you truly, truly enjoy. Amazing answer. And even more so, I think I'm going to read between the lines. If you don't mind, please yeah. disagree with me. We probably should be doing something in high school, something yes. that we're passionate about. We should be exploring. Would you agree? Yes, absolutely. And the great thing about high school is that you can do that. And I often tell students, if I start working with them younger, 
you know, when they're in, um, you know, ninth or 10th grade, that's the time to start exploring those things. See what you're interested in doing. What are the things you actually really like? What are the things that do spark that passion for you? And high school is a great place to do that, especially in the beginning, so that you can then kind of hone the things you really want to focus on for the last part of high school before you're doing those applications. Amazing. For parents and students that are listening or watching this, that high school is a great time to do it. But in addition, find out what you're passionate about. And it could be music, cultural clubs. Mm -hmm. It could be sports. It could be maybe you have a sibling who needs some extra help and you've developed a computer program that helps that student to maybe uh, study more, do with something. There are a million ideas and there you are the one that gets to decide your route and that passion is is a great time to discover when you're in high school. If if any yeah. if we pulled anything out of this, right? Uh, so help, so grateful that you're here today. Okay, my next question for you here. The next thing I think people are looking for advice on that we'd love from you is, what recommendations do you have for students and parents who aren't quite sure what the student's major or career might be? or the interest they might have when they begin the college application process. Can you help yes. us? Can you guide us through the, the, the importance of a major? Uh, what we, we might have something that we're passionate about, but we don't know what our future career is. And, and quite frankly, a lot of adults might not know what they really want to do when they grow up because we, we live in such a dynamic, wonderful environment yeah. these days. So can you, can you please guide us through a couple ideas when everybody's not the same? But got us to a couple ideas, a couple of the frequently asked questions you might get from people. And what should we look at if we really don't know what we want to do, but we know that we want to start applying to colleges? Yeah, I mean, I, I, it's, I do actually flip that question on parents a lot when they say, you know, oh, what should I, my student major in and how should they find that? And I go, well, when did you know what you wanted to do? You know, and then they, then it, it brings it home and they can kind of think, oh, that's a good point. You know, it is a little tough to, to make that decision when you're young and, it's a little wild that we ask a 15 and a 16 year old student to say, this is what I'm going to do. And this is what I'm going to study. The good news is that college is set up to help students discover that path. However, I don't think a student should just wander into a college and hope to figure it out that way. I don't think that's a smart way to do it. Um, I think that there are things you can still do to prepare yourself. I, I didn't know what I wanted to do till I was 30 years old. So I think it's okay for a student who's 16, 17 years old to say, I don't know what I want to do, but I should look into what my interests are. Let's get that defined. So a couple of ways you can do that. I think thinking about your interests in the academics. So classes that you're already taking, things that you're already interested in doing. Um, some students really have careers or ideas and are very directed. And in that way, that sometimes is a little easier. But if you aren't, think about the things that interest you now. Maybe pursue those classes in high school. Are you thinking about business? Some high schools offer business courses, or if you're thinking about art, take an art class in high school, see if you can explore some of those things. Um, if you can't do it at your high school, community college is another great way to take a class in the summer or on the side to pursue a particular topic that you might be interested in. Sometimes a student will take a class and say, I do not like this. And that is also valuable information. <laughs> it's good to know you don't want to go into nursing before you dive into nursing. So I think those are some good ways to do it. And I think researching um, majors when you're actually, once you've kind of narrowed down the few that you're looking at, I have my students do this. So I have them research the majors, look at the classes they're going to have to take in college in that major. If you look at the classes in a business major and you say, man, I really do not want to take all those statistics and accounting classes. Maybe certain business majors are not your thing, which is totally okay. So think about that now. Um, but maybe you love sciences and you're really excited about lab courses and maybe doing pre-med is going to be great for you. So Doing that research to know what it is you actually have to do to be that major, which I think is sometimes a connecting piece people don't think about. They think about the end game, right? Like, I want to own my own business, but what does that mean? What, what are you going to do to get there? That might be a business major, but it might not be. It might be economics. It might be something else that you're more excited about that'll get you to that point. So I think just researching some of those things and knowing what you might have to study is a good way to start. It'll also set you up, which is always my end game too to answer the questions that the applications ask, which they'll say, why do you want this major? And if you've done that research during sophomore year, or junior year, you'll have such, um, you'll just have a much better answer for that. Okay. That's an <laughs> excellent approach. And it leads into my next question that parents right. are always asking students. If, if students are listening to this, 
it's okay to not know when to start? Because that's our next question. How early do you recommend that students begin to map out and think about college career plans, including their chosen major, their choice of a university, their ideal career field? Boy, this is all overwhelming and I'm not even picking a college. So what would you recommend to them to make this a little bit easier and to start putting these in an order that's a little uh, easier to digest? Yeah, like what's the roadmap? <laughs> um, yeah, I think that the idea of mapping out a college and career plan, those can be different potentially. So I think career plans can take more time, right? You discover interests in college, you um, discover things that you may have never known that you could study when you're in college. I had never heard of the term criminology and then I went to college and I took courses in it. Now, I didn't major in it, but I found something I really enjoyed. And so there's still going to be some question marks and a path that you might forge as you get into college. However, I think as you're getting to that point, you need to be thinking about what's going to help you get to that path. So I think it's never too early to start thinking about it, but every student is different. For some students, talking about the college path when they're in ninth or 10th grade might be a little bit early. So I would encourage parents and, and teachers and folks to take each student into consideration and not push them too early. But if your student is excited about talking about it, that's great. Talk to them about what kind of colleges they might be interested in. Do some local tours. If you're in an area where there's a college nearby, tour a community college, tour a big four-year school, tour a small private school, just so they start thinking about what were the places and the spaces that I connected with. So maybe they really like that smaller college feel, and maybe that's going to have them think about those things as you get to that point later on. And if they're ready to do that in ninth or 10th grade, I don't think that's too early. I think starting to talk about majors uh, after they've had at least one year in high school, because now you can talk to them a little bit more with the context of what classes did you enjoy? What are you starting to like? What are you learning? What are you enjoying to learn? And I think that helps give you a foundation for that. Um, and I think those things will start to kind of meld as you get into that 10th grade year and junior year, I think is when you can start really building out that college list. They've had a couple of years of high school behind them. Now we're sort of talking about that next step. Excellent. Yeah, we um, couldn't agree with you more. And every student is different, right? Some want yeah. to start talking about a really big passion early on. We have a lot of student voices that we interview and we put them into our program that are shown in classrooms. And we have a fifth grader yesterday that we were interviewing who said, I have, ex I'm exploring these options and the parents aren't pushing the student. The student just yeah. happens to be fascinated by three career options and they're using their YouTube time to explore them, which I thought was really fascinating. So every student is so different and dynamic. And I love what you said. Let's not push the student. Let's not force them. But if they're asking those questions, great time to start yeah. dialoguing and discussing with them. The next question that we have for you is, how much consideration do you feel colleges might place on a student's digital footprint, their social media platforms, what they put out there? And how do we also navigate that? So how much consideration and should we put that into our application and what should we do with those platforms we're on, whether they're Instagram, whether it's TikTok or any other new apps that are coming out? It's such a good question. And I remember getting this question from families 10 years ago and that was before TikTok, you know, and Instagram was invite only and it was only people in their thirties. Like it was just such a different world. And college admissions folks were saying then, oh, we're not looking at any of this. But I do think that has changed. Uh, something that always blows everybody's minds is that the average age of an admissions counselor is somewhere in their mid twenties, which I think is feels horrifying to parents <laughs> because they think, how can someone this young be looking at my students right. application? Right. But at the same time, I think it's fat. It's fabulous because that student is actually, or that person who's looking at your student's application is closer to that student's age. So it's a good thing. They understand where they were. They were in their place, you know, five, six years ago. So, but taking that age into consideration, I think social media makes more of an impact. So um, I don't think colleges would tell you officially they're looking at social media, but it's very easy for someone to Google a name. And I hear sort of anecdotally from college admissions reps that sometimes they'll look up a student and it's usually not for nefarious reasons. They're looking up a student because they might say, oh my gosh, they won this soccer tournament and I would love to go learn more about that. Or, oh, they mentioned this thing that they started online. I'm going to go check it out. And then they might run into other things. So I think students should be aware that any presence they have online can be seen by a college. 
and that they should lock down profiles, keep things private. And even if it is private, make sure the things that they're posting are things that they wouldn't mind their college rep seeing. So, you know, and they can use that to their advantage too. talk about passions and interests of their own. But I think generally just making sure that they realize any digital footprint they put out there could be something that could be seen by college admissions. I like what you just said. That's pretty fascinating. You said that somebody in their mid to late 20s who is the admissions officer, coordinator, whatever that is, could be fascinated by something you mm-hmm. put on your your application. I traveled to Mexico to build a house uh, you know, for Habitat for Humanity. Well, that's fascinating. I did that too, but my yeah. I did it over here. Well, let me go search for this student because maybe we have a lot in common. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden they might find all this other stuff, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard of, and I, I'm going to ref, ask you to maybe refine your, your responses here, if you don't mind. Have you ever heard of a student being not fake online, but positive about helping someone in this case or doing this or being passionate and using their social media as a three-dimensional resume of who they are so that scholarship approver uh, um, <laughs> or the person who's the admissions officer or the internship of uh, the the the, co- the organization while you're a freshman in college and what you're in there, or maybe even in high school, some students are doing internships. They can actually get to know you and see that, wow, this is, you're very serious about it. Have you ever heard of students diving in and, and cre- turning their Instagram into something like, if I'm going to spend time on this, why don't I just make it positive and, and you can get to know me and get that, that uh, competitive edge? Have you heard of that? That's a great question. So I can't honestly tell you that I've heard of someone doing that in a smart way where it's, it's come back and helped them. However, I've had students do it in a way that wasn't intentional. Um, so, you know, I had a student who was really into cooking and they started posting on Instagram, some of the stuff that they were interested in doing. Um, and then I encouraged it. I said, Oh, that's so cool. Like who cares if nobody's looking at it? Like keep posting, post the stories and, you know, around these things that you're cooking. And just because I thought it was a good way for them to express themselves, I wasn't even being a smart counselor thinking this might help them in the end, right? But it was something they were able to drop onto their application. Now, can I tell you that an admissions person saw it and said, I'm going to admit that kid because I love that Instagram? No. However, I do think it made them interesting. And I would assume that it was probably something that was viewed by others. And it was a way for them to have a a storyline of all of these things they've been doing. So I think if it's something that's natural and a student wants to do that, it's a good idea. It's something that you could still share with folks to show that, you know, here's this digital history of all these cool things that I've been interested in that I've done. And obviously in the same vein of your other question of, you know, when you're doing activities, it shouldn't be fake. Those things will be obvious, right? If you just throw up an Instagram account to talk about every tournament you've won in soccer, that's not super interesting. But if you have a passion and a hobby about coding, or, you know, you're making an app and you want to talk about the development of that, that could be a really great way to share that and showcase that. Yeah. And while parents are listening to this right now and, and educators, a big part of what smart social does is we have our foot firmly rooted in the, in the employer space. So future career, I used to work at Disney and a lot of my friends work at the world's biggest companies. We teach students how to get a job at SpaceX, Amazon, Google, Tesla. And even if they don't want to work at those organizations, we show them, here's what they're going to look like on the interview. Here's what colleges are typically looking like. Why don't we just average those out and you just realize this is probably your future. We do know uh, for parents who are listening, whereas a college may not always look at your stuff, but they make it interested, an employer typically will. And even if they're like, HR is like, legally, we're not allowed to, they typically are. I'll just say, I'll tell you right now, I know a lot of the HR people, I've written a couple books on this topic. They're looking because they're going to commit only to one person. And I like to tell students this too, while I'm not, while Smart Social is not here to guide your college application process, we do fully understand that everything comes down to kind of budgetary concerns. And if even if you don't want a scholarship, they can only say yes to UCLA as an example. Um, they, they have more applications than just about anybody else in the world. I think that's the most, I, I think it's, I forget the number, but I used to say it on stage a lot. 14%, over 100,000. Over 100,000. Yeah. And I think we let in about 15,000 a year or something like that. 15 to, it's about 14%, mm-hmm. I think, if, if, if that's the number I do remember. They want to say yes to the right people that are going to do the great things on their campus. So typically what they are going to do 
is say I, I'm limited to how many how many yeses I can say. And it's not that they are nefarious towards trying to find bad things on our accounts or stuff, but they want the best culture. Uh, students are going to do great things with that seat that they get in that class, right? And so what we often try to remind parents is companies the same way, internships are the same way. We're going to pour our lives into these students to teach them during this internship to mold them into amazing, uh, capable people in this field, whatever field that is. And so we're often telling them, Make sure that what you have online, it can help you. We, we strongly believe in the, in the internship space, in the career space. So if you are going to build that out, know that your future is part of that. Um, 10 years ago, a lot of parents remember this. They often would say, oh, I'm going to, um, when I apply to college, I'm just going to hide my Facebook name or change the name mm -hmm. and they won't find me. Do you remember hearing that a lot? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then a lot of employers are like, we're so much smarter than that. Like, you, yeah. Google figured out that you misspelled your name by one letter and right. with a weird European character, like it still put you to the top of Google. We found yeah. you and we found that you really enjoy Tuesday taco night and, and right. you know, and all this stuff. And so, which might not be bad, but you get the idea. So just a precaution to parents, a lot of employers are looking for that. So if they say no to every other intern and they say yes to you, your student, they want to know what's that past performance? How is that going to be a, a predictor of future behavior? And they kind of want to fall in love with us. Uh, you know, that that student, like, whoa, this is a real student. They, the two-dimensional application looks great. But the three-dimensional student shares how they give back, how they help, what that what that means to them. So um, I love where this is going. My next question for you would be, and 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 we don't even have to go down this route, but how impactful if a student were to have a video resume or a little portfolio or something along those lines, would it be for students kind of in line with the last question for if they were to have that little website, for me, it's joshoaks.com. For some students, it's a video resume of, hi, my numbers don't tell the whole story. I'm a 3.7 GPA, but let me tell you what I do for the Special Olympics. What do you think that would do for somebody who what would advise if somebody decided they wanted to do a video resume or a portfolio, how would they, what would be the things that they might put that on there? What would be the, the prompts that they would ask themselves before they put something onto that, that online piece? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and actually some colleges are, do give space. They'll give space to say, Hey, is there anything else you want to tell us? You know, and I, we call that additional information. And sometimes that's just giving context around something, but I've had some students who are so incredibly packed with activities or maybe some of the activity, activities they've done have gotten on the news or, you know, they've been in the newspaper for something. And I say, this is a place to put that, to let them know that they can go check out more information about you. Or maybe if they have an art resume, even if they aren't applying to an art program, there are colleges that will allow space for you to send in a portfolio or send in some more information that just gives you them more information about who you are as a human even if it's unrelated to your major. So I think it's something to be aware of. Um, I don't think a lot of colleges are using this officially. It's usually sort of in addition to. However, I will throw out, I know the big uh, elephant in the room right now is AI. And I think with the advent of AI, helping students with essays and um, getting involved with the application process, I think it's possible that colleges will be looking for something that's more personal. There's been a lot of talk about how they'll handle that. Will that be timed essays that you have to write on the spot and turn in? Will that be more interviews? Um, it could be more video interviews. So I think that it's very valuable to consider this to be something that you should be thinking about doing. Um, it, and it can be good practice for future. It can be good practice for your future college applications, internships, like you mentioned. So I think we'll see more of this as being a value add in the next few years in some way. Yeah. And smart social, we, we've been growing over the last few years and yes, we take resumes and, uh, from, from applicants, but also we have video interviews. We have an automated system. Once we love your resume, we go, great. You've been accepted to the second round to save you time. We are going to work around your schedule and our automated thing will ask you five questions and you can take as many retakes as you want. And you just click, click record. And it gives you five minutes to answer, feel comfortable. We're on the other end. We're normal humans. And they there's a video interview thing where you have to think through what was a difficult time. And 
the more vulnerable that people are, the more they do in a program, which is sharing their, their truth or story. So I love where you're going with that. We, we may go back to how does that person perform live? Yeah. Okay. The last, the last question for you here today is, and I'm really grateful for your time. Of course. What do you feel most students overlook when applying for scholarship opportunities? And in addition, what should we start to look for? College is expensive. I think this is a huge elephant in the room as well, as you said, mm -hmm. where should we start? What do we do? Yeah, gosh, I, <laughs> I was thinking about this before we hopped on here and I thought my answer to what do people overlook with scholarships is generally everything. And I, I am, I am fortunate in that I work with families who are in a better situation financially. However, most of those families still want scholarships and still might need them for particular schools. I mean, college cost has gone up. We're looking at private colleges costing somewhere between sixty to eighty thousand dollars a year. And that's that's a wild number. So how can you pay for that? I think uh, the mistakes that students make are that they don't start looking for them early enough. You can start looking for scholarships, you know, in high school before you're even applying to colleges. There are some that are available to students who are younger. They can apply. They can hang on to the scholarships to use. Um, you can start looking for those in junior and senior year before you're even getting your applications out. Most of those can be used at at any college. Um, the other thing that students are missing out on is the college match process, which is something that isn't spoken about a lot with scholarships. However, when students are creating their college list, the best way to maximize scholarships is to apply to schools who are going to match with you academically, personally, all of that. Because those colleges are going to want to get you to attend. And the way they do that, knowing that you're going to get multiple offers from different colleges, right? That's, that's how the process works. One of the ways they can do that is to sweeten the deal with some scholarships. So if you are very smart and you do the college list research by saying, hey, I'm going to pick schools that I know I'm going to be such a great match for the type of student they're looking for academically and everything, they're more likely to offer you scholarship money to come there. Most of the money in college admissions comes from the colleges directly, which I think also people don't know. So that part of the process is super, super important. Not just throwing darts, you know, at a target and saying, I'm going to apply to 25 different schools and then see what comes out with money. That's not always the best process. So I think the college search, looking at scholarships, applying early, and then looking at extra scholarships that colleges offer themselves. I always tell students, do that, do that research. Look for the scholarships that colleges are offering outside of admissions. You might have to do an extra application, but it can be really worthwhile if that's a scholarship that can be a significant amount of money. So I think they're just overwhelmed with information. And sometimes that feels like one extra thing, but it can make a huge difference, right? In your options. What a great tip. I mean, let me pull out one of the nuggets you said that I think is really, really valuable. And I think we could talk, we could have a whole nother episode just about picking the right place that that or the right scholarship and, and making it work financially for every family, which I think not enough people talk about. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it impacts the rest of your life. And I think that's been kind of quiet. If, I, if I'm, I'm going to be that blunt person right now and say that it's true. But what you just said was so fascinating because I heard this from a mom years ago. She said, we picked a college for our daughter that wanted us just as much as we wanted them. And so this scholarship is for softball and this, and even if she gets an injury, the next four years are paid for. And I thought that was so fascinating. Find a college that really, really wants you. And they say, we have to have you on our campus for all these reasons, which I think is so fascinating because then your student can breathe easy. It's maybe, maybe it's, maybe they only pay for a dorm room. Maybe, maybe they mm -hmm. get free food. Maybe there's a, a, all your books are paid for. Maybe it's full ride, yeah. uh, whatever that is. Um, and, and uh, there's so, so many options out there, but I think that's a really key thing that you just said that's so powerful is find a school that really wants you rather than yeah. you going, I have to go to this school because of X, Y, Z reason yeah. or past whatever that is, or my thought process. So I thought right. that was amazing. Or for a name brand, right? Like a name brand school doesn't need to entice you to go there, right? Like those name brand schools are going to say, our gift is we have admitted you. Now you can write a check <laughs> because students will write checks to go there. And there's, there's no data out there that really supports that the school, the name of the school you go to correlates to money, success, wealth later in life. If that data existed, believe me, colleges would be mailing it to you in postcards, but it doesn't because in our country, the way it's set up is 
what you do, you know, the internships that you, you work with people who do that. So the internships you're getting, the things you're doing on a college campus, those things correlate to success and career um, after college. So uh, my advice, honestly, and not, not a lot of people take it, but I would say gear a college list that actually swings heavily more towards schools that you're more likely to be getting into. Gear your college list to have more schools that are going to admit you and more scholarship opportunities so that you can make a smart financial decision so that by the time you graduate, you aren't in the kind of debt or that your parents aren't in the kind of debt that students are getting into now. Yeah, 100%. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think the industry is making that as well. And if I could throw out one more tip for our parents, yeah. you know, start early asking those questions to students. No pressure, as we've said already in this episode, but hey, do you, do you have any idea what you might want to do and focus on that future career rather than where do you want to go to college? College is stressful for every kiddo. Grades are stressful. AP classes are stressful. It's a really wild amount of stress students have. But as I've been on stage across this great country, I think I, I hit my 29th state for public speaking last week in New Hampshire. That was my 29th state. When I'm in front of a lot of middle schoolers, I'll often bring a lot of them up and ask them, what do you want to do in your future for, for your career? And then we go straight for the career. And a lot of sixth graders will say, I want to do this and this and this. And they kind of already know sometimes. Mm -hmm. I had a sixth grader come up at the end one day and say, couldn't even tell you what state it was. I just remember this child's face. And they said, the kid said, thank you for asking me about this because I don't really talk to very many people about that. I'm excited about this career. And the kids started going off on like all these cool things and, and it's crazy. Well, young adult right there. Yeah. And, and so we learned early on that, that students, if you, if you focus them on the fun part, which is what do you aspire to be someday? And if you don't know, that's okay. But let's start thinking about that. Then we can back that up maybe into a dream major, maybe to explore, mm -hmm. right? And then we can back it up into how do we explore YouTube videos now, maybe an internship or a, a shadowing of somebody that your parents know that's in that industry, yep. a trusted adult. Okay, yep. amazing. And then once you figure out those majors and we backed it up and we figured all that out, maybe there's a university that you can do with that and there's scholarships at that university. Parents, it's never too early to just ask those questions. Open them up like I get to do on stage is, what do you want to do someday? I'm going to show you how to get there. But what do you want to do? This, this whole college thing, we have so many great experts like our guest here today. Um, it, it really is different for every family. Nobody can figure it out. It's wonderful. I mean, they're, they're incredible experts. But I, I really would implore people, talk about that future career. And maybe it makes this process a little bit easier. Maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But we've had a lot of sixth graders all the way through 12th grade say that that's worked out well for them. Yeah. I want to thank you. Where can people find you? We're going to link below to all of your information. What would you tell people to do for the next step and where can they find you? Uh, yeah, I mean, you can check out my website, which is bbcollegeprep.com. Um, folks can email me and um, through that website and reach out. If they have questions, I'm happy to just answer questions as well. Um, and uh, yeah, so just reach out if you have questions about anything with college stuff. And if I can help you with something, I'm happy to do that too. Thank you so much for your time here today. Yeah. For the rest of you, remember, let's keep it light, bright, and polite online because our students are watching and everything we're doing online is really kind of a predictor of where we're going to go in the future. I'm Josh Oaks, the host of the smartsocial.com podcast. We'll see all of you very soon. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening to the smartsocial.com podcast with this week's topics. We invite you to join the smartsocial.com VIP program. As a very informed parent VIP member, you will learn about the dangers and benefits of social media for your kids and get tips every week to keep your family safe online and most importantly, to teach your students how to shine online. We have over 130 detailed app guides that cover apps like TikTok, Snapchat, Instagram, and 100 plus apps you might not have heard of, but your students may have visited or downloaded. Find out more and join today at smartsocial.com slash VIP. Please remember to rate, subscribe, and review so we can continue to help more parents and educators just like you. I'm your host, Josh Oaks. As always, remember to keep it light, bright, and polite. We'll see you on the next episode. Have a great day.